So I'm going to take a few questions, but obviously I want to uh, turn this over to uh, to Jeremy. It's, uh, it's really important for uh, for him. Uh, it's a big day for the Boston Bruins and for Jeremy to see, to be celebrating and moving forward. And we're excited they'll be on the plane today. So I'll take a couple questions, then turn it over. Uh, I mean, you know, pastas went for a long period of time uh, as well. I, I think I've been pretty consistent um, in in, uh, in in saying that every deal has its own timeline. Um, you know, there's twists, turns, and such. You'd hope they'd be, you know, a straight and narrow path, but it just doesn't always work out that way. And uh, you have to be respectful of of uh, and listen. I think that's part of this whole exercise of, of going through negotiations, you have to be willing to listen to what's important for, for, uh, for the other party. And, and ultimately when you, our plan was um, to negotiate a deal and, and uh, in a perfect world, we, we both agreed that, that the longest deal we could, <clears throat> we could find uh, once we got to common ground was, was, uh, was what we were hoping for. And that's, that's where it ended up. What kind of impacts did Monday have with Cam's comments and that Melissa's response? I mean, you know, Jeremy might comment further, but for me, that's just an indication of, of both sides would like to find a deal, and, and ultimately we did. Um, I don't think it necessarily moved things, you know, because we had deadlines anyway from a standpoint of, of we wanted Jeremy uh, in our lineup and, and he wants to play hockey. Ultimately, he wanted to play for the Boston Bruins, and that's the result. So, you know, we're, uh, we're happy moving forward, and uh, we got some roster stuff we have to do as a result of that. Yesterday, I had, I had some cap space. Today, I don't have as much. So we, we unfortunately have to make some, some really hard roster decisions, but that's part of the business too. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, there's a there's an offset. You know, Jeremy's goes down, ours goes up, so it's 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 a good compromise to be to be in the position we are today. To be perfectly honest with you, uh, and that was what our our hope was all along. Um, you know, I think I was pretty honest that the team was being hurt and he himself not without preparation and such. Now we're fortunate that he you know he does work hard and and he'll be in a good spot, to, uh, you know, to go in and, and uh, uh, support you know. Um, Jonas um, for opening night, and then we'll, we'll he and Bob will decide when uh, when he feels you know comfortable. But it won't be for lack of effort on his part in preparation to to, to be as ready as uh, as he can be in as soon as point. Scott, if I can drill down on Scott's question a little bit, Cam's comments were lined up about eleven thirty on Monday, and by six o'clock or so, a representative was saying put out publicly that the sixty four million offer was never made. So can you clear up what you know what is a discrepancy here? Misunderstanding, mischaracterization. What was it? I just think, in, in the spirit of negotiations, there's you know, there's a there's a, a a range of things when people are talking, and you know, I I think Lewis and I's communication, and and he's really good at uh, advocating for his client, and, and and when pushback comes, he's defending his client in that sense. Um, there, you know, specifics, <clears throat> albeit in our conversations, are important. In the exterior, in the narrative, they're not as important. Um, just got to make sure you stay in communication and, and, and work through some of those sticky points. I may agree with that or not, but he said specifically the $64 million offer was never paid. Did you hear a response? No, not, not really. Like, I think I have responded to, you know, to answer your question, and uh, I feel very comfortable in terms of where, where our communication was all along, as I said. Narrative is narrative, and, and you know, that's all I have. So you don't expect Jeremy will start on Tuesday then? No, no. I mean, game reps are game reps, and, and you know, preseason is there for a reason, um, you know, to go through some uh, uh, <clears throat> progressions. But as I said, you know, he works hard. He'll be ready to go, hopefully, at the soonest point possible. Um, but he and goalie Bob will have some work to do, and uh, and we're all excited to have him back in the net. So I will turn it over to uh, to Jeremy and, uh, and officially welcome him back. Missed you guys. <laughs> uh before we do get going, I would like to have one thing to say. Um, I had a lot of ties indirectly with Johnny Goudreau, and I think this is a great platform for me and my family and obviously this organization to to send our condolences to that family and Johnny and Matthew and, um, you know, obviously sharing the same agent with Louis Gross. 
every conversation I had with him ever since I, I joined their team with, when I was 16 had something to do with Johnny and, and just the way that Lewis spoke about him and uh, all the uh, similarities that him and I had, uh, which is what he would tell me is, is pretty humbling. So I hope that his family feels the support endlessly from my family, obviously me and the entire hockey world. And, and to see the amount of outreach and love that he got is, uh, it just goes to show what kind of impact he had in our world and, and, and for the, uh, the game of hockey. So, um, I just really wanted to get that across and we miss him a lot. You know, I, I lost track of days. I didn't know what day it was, so <laughs> it was a it was a day by day thing. And and again, it, it's a negotiation. And uh, I respect the fact that you have to ask these questions. And again, uh, what I'm truly focused on is the future and the here and now. And everything else was a blur in my mind. And and all I'm ca worried about is is being in the in net for the Boston Bruins right now. And uh, I'm overjoyed with it. So uh, I'm really excited about that. Were you at all concerned about maybe the quote of public? Uh, it's funny you say that because I feel an incredible amount of support. I felt an incredible amount of support throughout this entire process. And uh, every day there was calls coming in. And, you know, those are the people that truly care about you as an individual. And, and even when they're not in your shoes, they understand that, you know, you're in that spotlight. And, and to see the amount of people that were just coming out of the woodworks, reaching out to me, uh, and my family, uh, just showing support and love. Uh, that, w that for me was, was what mattered most. And, and to see the outreach of, of fans and, and this city just really supporting me throughout this entire process just showed uh, how much it meant to me, or it means to me to be a Boston Bruin. And that that's what was one thing that drove me every day to, to just stay in the moment, keep, keep my uh, glass half full mentality and, and a smile on my face. And that's what ultimately brought, brought me to this place. Jeremy, a couple, if I could, there was an ongoing narrative here, and I brought with Cam on Monday that uh, you were out to, to reset the market for goaltenders. Cam said he agreed with that narrative. What's your spin on that? Uh, again, I, I respect the fact that you had to ask that question, and and to be honest, I I am just so excited to be a Boston Bruin, and the fact that we went through this. You know, a process and, and the uh, the tools that I learned with it, it, it's gone now. And all I care about is being a Bruin. And the fact that I could do that for eight years and and instill myself as a leader, and as a true member of this this city is is all I care about right now. And I couldn't be happier. And also to crystallize that that day, <clears throat> you said it's a bit of a blur. So I'll, I'll try to crystallize this. Uh, for as invested you were in this negotiation that seven hours after Cam put the $64 million, made that public, mm. your agent felt compelled to make a statement that that was never made. So can you clarify that? Again, I, I, Lewis was incredible in this entire process, and it just goes to show what he would do to, to really protect me as his client and, and sticking his neck out and making sure that you know everyone knew that some accusations are, are true and some are false. And it's not my job necessarily right here, right now, to uh, to give you that answer. And obviously, our party and our team knows the truth. But at the same time, we found an agreement. And the fact that I could be here for eight years gives me goofs when I'm saying that, Dupes. It's it's an incredible feeling, and that's all I care about is moving forward and and winning for this organization. Your number is two million above what can be public. There seems to be a link what he was suggesting or saying and where you've landed. Coincidence? I mean, I'm, I'm happy with, uh, with everything. And again, I, I couldn't be more excited to be in this position. So you can dissect it all you want and, uh, you know, think about it. But again, what's that going to do? We're here right now. Uh, I got a plane to catch in an hour. And that's all I care about, man. I, I couldn't be more happy. And it's funny when you look at the big picture of things and you know, 10, 15 years ago, 
I would never believe that this would be a reality in my world. So the kid from Alaska standing right here in front of you is is really happy and beyond pleased to, to be a Bruin for eight more years. Jeremy, how do you keep yourself ready to play? And how long do you think it'll take before you're ready to get that goal? I'm so happy you asked that. <laughs> it was, I have a, uh, I'm a black bear at heart and through and through black bear. Um, but I could not have done it without BU and the coaching staff, Jay, or Jay Pandolfo, uh, Kim Brannevold and Ken Whittier and Brian Decord uh, and all those boys in that locker room. I was there every day uh, as soon as camp started and they gave me an oasis to completely escape the outside world and the amount of happiness and support that they provided for me and obviously a great training place to uh, to keep my game sharp throughout this entire process. Uh, I could not have done it without them. So again, even though I'm a black bear through and through, I'm a I'm a uh, honorary terrier because those guys, I really hope they feel the love and, and appreciation that I have for what they did for me. And again, I have a forever debt to those guys in, in that locker room and just allowing me to escape the, uh, escape the reality. Trevor, you talked a lot last year about kind of the motivation that came from the arbitration process. Does this process give you some motivation or does living up to the contract that you just signed give you motivation? What, what are the... What, how does what you just went through impact your mindset going into now trying to live up to that? That's a great question. I think the motivation is to stay on the cup through and through. That's all I care about. And the process that us players have to go through, again, to attain a job, to attain you know trust in, in our staff and, uh, and our teammates and obviously the cities that we play for, that's all motivation that gains up and, and – uh, I can guarantee you that this step in this chapter in my career is going to motivate me uh, above and beyond what I have had before. And and again, the end goal is to to win a Stanley Cup, and I believe that this is a group that can do it and have shots at it many years. And every year I'm a part of it, I'm going to make sure that's a reality. And so again, I, I'm just beyond grateful to be in this position. You've worked with a lot of good Colby guys over the course of your career, Alfie and Colby Bob. Did you work with Brian Decord before? And did he, you know, was there anything new that you sort of learned from him? Uh, I haven't gotten on the ice with him except for before the draft, actually. And it was really fun to, to get little pieces of what he's, he's doing. Obviously, he's had a, a ton of success with stop at goaltending. And, and uh, it was really fun to be in you know, his work environment with the BU guys and, and getting reps out there. But the main thing with him was just you know, taking my game and, and complimenting it. And so that's what I appreciated that he brought to the table. Uh, you, you, through the process, there's a lot of demons that can creep in your head. You know, there's a lot of unknowns. And, and again, what I knew is that my heart was going to be in Boston and I was going to do everything I could and, and my team was going to do everything I, we could to, to stay a Bruin for my whole career. And that's going to continue. So that's all. I, the, the light was at the end of the tunnel and, and we knew that we had tools and and reason to stay here and and again management said or thought the same thing so that was a really special point where we finally reached an agreement and and we're both on the same same boat of wanting to win stanley cups what's the more what's the more significant piece for you to get ready here for the first real for the first real game i think just doing what i've been doing and that's being the hardest worker on the ice every time i possibly can be and and you know, even though I didn't have uh, as much flow drills and, and obviously game uh, game type scenarios lately, that's going to be something that clicks right away. And as players, we all know that it only takes you know a couple of real good skates to get back into the rhythm of things, and and that's our jobs. And so my job is to do exactly that. Is when I start getting reps, I'm going to be game ready. I want to be <laughs> game ready right away. You know, it's going to be fun teasing. You know, I want to start every game. So. Uh, I'm excited for that uh, that challenge. So is it not too fine a point? Is that three days? Is that five days? That's right now, Dupes. You know that. <laughs> Last one. Jeremy, I spoke to you was at the Boston Trial. You said you really enjoyed getting to know the city better. What does it mean to you to now be in the city for the next eight years? And what works do you have to put there? 
uh, that's goosebumps right now. It's uh, it's everything. And again, I couldn't have done this process without the the incredible support of the city and the fans, and my incredible family. Um, you know, first and foremost, my dad. Uh, he's been there through it all, and and uh, it's gonna be pretty special getting to hug him after this. Uh, I could just imagine what it's gonna be like. So uh, my amazing. Agent, obviously, Lewis and the entire sports professional team, special management team, and uh, my wonderful girlfriend and her entire family. And again, this city is uh, is unmatched, and that's why so many players want to play here. And I cannot wait to represent it the right way for eight more years. Thank you. Thanks, guys.